Hello everyone and welcome back to our mini series of Grasshopper part 3. So when are we going back to the things that we had before? So we already had talked about this before. We have the rectangles which are imported from a geometry in Rhino which are then extruded by a certain amount upwards and then put on a material which is uh, red in this case. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is first of all we're going to be, do two things. We're going to make um, those. We're going to create those rectangles that we have here in Grasshopper itself. So it's natively in Grasshopper. Plus on top of that, we're going to make a certain kind of visual aspect that 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 uses the material uh, a more interesting way. So we're going to basically create like a rainbow effect depending on a point that we put in the space. So let's deactivate first the preview so we can focus more on the rectangles that we have here in the beginning. So we have an amount of rectangles, 150 curves, as you see here in the top left, and we want to create those in the Grasshopper environment. So there are two components for those that are really important that we need to use. The first one is if you double click rectangle, and the other one is populate 2D. So let's disable the preview this one first. So the rectangle basically takes a certain plane that's just basically a point and has an X and a Y size. And uh, it basically, I don't know if it did or not. Okay, but it has um, a rectangle here. And what we want it basically to be, have this rectangle all over the place here as well. So what we can basically do we can use this component, it's called populate 2D. If you activate it, we see there are already a few points created here in this form that exists somewhere here. So we want to use this rectangle and populate this geometry with, um, with points. So what are we gonna do first? We just create a simple, very simple number slider like this, like this and put it in here. And we should see oppa, a rectangle taking place, as you see here, the screen one, deactivate this one. It's a little bit small, so we double click this and we're gonna increase the max size a little bit to maybe 100. And as you see, now we have a rectangle that we can use way better. Let me hide those for the time being. So next we want to populate this area with the rectangles that we have here. Okay, uh, we, will, we will populate the points. So we just drag and drop the rectangle into the region part. And as you see, the rectangles are in the region. Now we can just kind of can use the rectangle parts again. Control C, Control V. We will also change the size a little bit, maybe just to like 11. Put it in the X and Y size like this. And then we use the points that we have here as the population, as the planes for those things. And as we see, those reflections are created, they're kind of messy, so I think we're gonna make them a little bit smaller. Now that looks like there are some, some of them are overlapping, I think that's pretty good. It works for me. Maybe double click it, put it on, on the floating point numbers as well, and then maybe make the maximum amount a little bit smaller, so we have a more like delegates uh, way of using that. So nice, so let's uh, deactive, uh, make those two um, not previewable anymore. Now we already have our rectangles. What we still want to do maybe is to add like a little rotation to it, which is also very easy to do. Double click, rotate, enter. Then here we need the geometry, the angle, and the plane it, it rotates around. So the geometry that we have is this one, we have it. The angle uh, is an angle that is predefined for now. And then the plane. The plane is basically the rotation axis that is happening. And this is basically the population we had in the beginning. Okay, now you see there is something happened there and it looks like as if it just turned everything 180 degrees. However, if we put, um, Grasshopper works with um, radians and not with degrees. So we need to right click this and click degrees. And then we're gonna put a number slider of maybe 180 in here. 
and hoppa. and now we see we have them all rotating at once however we might want them to have a rotating all a little bit different so in order to do that we need to have a series that has a certain step and a certain count so the count depends on the amount of points that we have in the beginning here we see the count the, the points are 100 so we want to change it as well put numbers like here put this in here so the series like basically the points let me just show it by the panel here we want to create 110 points that are created here and we want to have them in a certain way of how they rotate right now they rotate by one degree each time we might might want to have a little bit of um, lean way in that as well and then we put this uh, the output of this of the panel or of the series here directly into the angle and as you see <laughs> that looks a bit weird so i want to have a little bit less so yeah this looks a little bit more like it's it rotates a little bit around every one of those okay like that good um now we already finished with the first part so let's just compare the two the two things so we did just show so th those were our base uh, things that we had here we just gonna um wait we're just gonna first gonna move those things a little bit over Not change the color. Ah. Okay, just move this a little bit over here. And then we want to move the rectangles that we have here, and drag and drop them into the geometry that we have in the beginning. And it should basically override uh, the geometry that we had there. So, oops. So, right now, that will be the geometry that is uh, in this moment. And we want to just Deactivate this and then we want to just take a look at the preview and as you see it is still working as intended as well it's gonna delete those okay now we have our geometry back again so what we want to do now is basically create a certain color range so the geometry just all just doesn't look like the same but we're actually gonna create some kind of like a rainbow or like gradient depending on the distance to a certain point. So it can kind of get like some kind of memorization to, memorization to it. So there are a few um, components that you need to use in here. First of all is the gradient. And this looks a little bit different. I will come to that in a second. And then there was also be the distance component here. And we might also, for this, need the area components as well. Because this gives us the center of the area. So what is this gradient component? So basically, it takes um, certain points um, and basically gets is the, the, the numbers of points in a certain parameter range. So that's like the lower limit the upper limit and then um, where the gradients are in basically defined in between that and we're doing this by doing a point search between a point that we define and a point that is um, in the middle of those rectangles so we first gonna get the point in the middle of the rectangles which is in this case would be just the geometry or of the region that we had here and put it into the geometry tab and here you see that we activated this thing first we see it kind of well it's a little bit weird sometimes here for example but it mostly gets the middle point of our geometry so the next thing is that we are going to create the um, new points um, in the grasshopper environment so we just double click point and now we right click it and we set one point and it doesn't ask us for the geometry in in rhino but we rather just create a point in the grasshopper definition so as you see it doesn't exist in the rhino viewport but if i click on it here in the grasshopper viewport it still exists here and i can move it around 
freely as I want basically without any problems. Okay, now we want to have the distance between those two points. So that's the centroid here and the points here. Okay, good. Um, now we are having, there are certain ways of doing that. Uh, the next step. There is not a perfect like right or wrong in that. But um, I think the best way would be of actually, wait, let me see. No, this doesn't exist here. But we can Okay, I think we just make make it like in a, in a normal way for now. So we just put this in the parameter here. However, it wants to have an upper limit and a lower limit. So we can just we will create two number sliders, and we're gonna put those in here, and just cr create upper a lower limit yourself of uh, basically the, the distance between those two points. So. And this will be now our gradient of the things that we have here. And we can also, by the way, if we right click it and click on presets, we can have all kind of different ones. This one, for example, is quite useful if we wanna have a more colorful viewpoint. So now we have those um, different values here and there should be like yeah, 41 values and 41 um, B reps. And we're gonna put this into the geometry and now we activate the geometry or make them uh, visible again. Um, and nothing happens. That is because, ah, I put the geometry uh, the wrong way. So we need to put the material here, like down here, not in the upper part. So, and now you see we have a very colorful bunch of colors in here as well. And I'm just gonna make a very small adjustment as well because um, I just want to have a little ground so rectangle and a planner surface and we change to render view and now we have a very nice visible way and again here now we can basically have this point here and we're gonna move it around and you see it changes instantly the way we want to have it And I think that's pretty useful to do. So like that, you see it's gonna... And for example, we wanna change the gradient around a little bit, maybe to like more subtle, like this one looks more greeny. Maybe actually it fits better to the channel of the YouTube. So I think that's the color we go, should be going for. And then we can adjust basically the, the, the parameter or the gradient uh, definition of it. Um, there's also... So this is basically how it already works. And this is a very kind of mm, very simplistic, very uh, good way of like showing the way of how you can display that. If you have a little bit more time now, we're gonna also tackle um, the idea of domains a little bit more because right now we would have the problem because there's a certain amount of numbers coming from here and they're going into the parameter. And if I, for example, would have the upper and lower limit, like to to uh, like set to like a weird amounts like this, you see it just would be just one color, and it would maybe take time until you figure it out uh, which is the right one. And for example, if you use millimeters instead of meters, it could be like a whole different kind of number into the ten thousands, one hundred thousands. So there is a way to basically um, make it that those numbers that we have from here will be only be in the range of zero to one. And in that we're gonna use under math, domain, we map numbers, and we're gonna uh, construct a domain as well. So if you take a look, if you zoom really into the um, domain thing, it basically, you can see it like this, okay? I have my numbers here and I remap them to a certain um, new series of numbers which exists. So. We're gonna do that right now, but with a domain. It's gonna be a little bit complicated, but um, hopefully you can understand it, at least kind of get a grip of it, because domains are rather important to kind of 
reuse or reparameterize your numbers that, that are given to you. So um, we're gonna use basically the upper and the lower limits here in the domain end and in the domain start. So now a domain will be created between 53 and 100. So now um, we're, going, we're going to have the, uh, it can also be known between zero and one, like it doesn't really matter which those are just, well, we just put them here like this. And now we have the numbers between, uh, yeah, whatever those numbers are. Let me just take a look with the panel here, slash slash. And we see like 30 and 29. Yeah, so there's like no number under under 10. I guess like when I put this further closer, yeah, we see numbers like four. Okay, so we need to, so we need to basically recalculate those numbers. So we have our the values are the values that we want to change. The source is basically the domain of how it is defined already, and now we that will be the target domain. So the target domain we already defined, and now we need to also um, to create with the bounds under domain bounds, we can create the numbers between, um, we can create the numbers of the source we want to remap. And then we also need to then have the numbers that we want to change in the first place. So those are the distance points. As you see now, here for example, wait, let's give me go up to the first ones. So this was 27 before, and now it's okay, it's just 29 before, but let me. Just create this more stronger. You see, this twenty-seven was a whole new number now. And now, if we want to create, if you put the met numbers into the parameter, you see all the different ways. That doesn't doesn't matter if we want to change. This actually doesn't matter anymore. Um, all of those points are already always in the spectrum of colors that I defined here. So we don't need to rechange them or, or remake them, and um, it's always going to be in the same spectrum. So that's basically the the way of how can you like uh, use the parameters um, or to remap the numbers in order to have them between a certain value. Normally, it's between one and zero to use to your own advantage. So just to recap. Um, we created a population of points. Those points were then wrote uh, and had a rectangle on them, and those rectangles were rotated depending on the amount of points. Then we had our formula of how we can region those things to, those things together and extrude them up in a certain different way. Uh, depending on uh, a series of numbers, basically. And then we create uh, a new point, which dependent on the, the center of the points that we had before, will create uh, a gradient of colors, which is between those colors here, which are then applied to the set um, centers of the geometry before. And this will result basically in the end product of this. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope that helped. Um, we will see what we take. Uh, uh, let me know what you want to take a look in the next one. Maybe if you should continue on this one, and maybe take a look at plugins um, of how to, for example, import those things correctly or how to reuse them in other plugins as well. So yeah, thank you very much. Let me know and see you in the next one. Bye bye.